When we talk about representing the shape of the surface of the Earth, we'll oftentimes refer to topography or to relief or to terrain. And all of those words are vaguely synonymous. They're essentially talking about the variations in the shape, elevation, and slope of the land. The two primary concepts that you need to understand when talking about representations of the topography of the land are elevation and slope. So I want to illustrate uh, both of those. So when we think about elevation, what we're talking about is a height above some kind of a reference point. So generally, elevation on Earth, the reference point is mean sea level. This is also known as the vertical datum. So if we imagine the land over here on the left and the sea over here on the right, sea, mean sea level is going to be our vertical datum, the reference point from which we measure elevation. So mean sea level, or the average sea level, is zero feet, right? It's, that's the starting point. If we measure some position on land and we want to know its elevation, we're going to measure it relative to that sea level. Let's say that in this case, the elevation is 10 feet above mean sea level. If we go to a higher elevation, we're measuring again from mean sea level. The idea of using mean sea level is that water, or the sea, is supposed to be the same height everywhere on Earth. In reality, it's not quite that simple, but for most local purposes, this works. And I also want to distinguish between the use of the word elevation, which refers to height above a reference point, versus altitude. Uh, elevation is usually the height of the land. Altitude uh, refers to your height above the land, say when you're in an airplane, for example. So elevation is the first main point we need to understand. The second important component to understanding relief or the topography of the land after elevation is the idea of slope. And slope describes um, a measure of the vertical difference in elevation of a surface at two different points in relation to the horizontal distance between the same two points. So Slope is essentially an expression of a relationship between rise, the vertical distance between two points, and the run, or the horizontal distance between those same two points. So let me talk about it in a real simple example. So let's imagine that we have a point over here. We'll call it point A. And we've got another point over here. And we'll call it point B. And so those two points are separated by a horizontal distance, and in this case, by a vertical distance, as I've drawn it. So let's imagine that A is 30 feet away from B, horizontally speaking, and B is 3 feet higher than point A. So the elevation difference between those two points is the rise. In a very simple way, you think you rise three feet when you travel between A and B, and the 30 feet of distance is referred to as the run. Slope is frequently described and very simply as simply the relationship between rise and run, frequently written this way, rise over run. But we can express slope in a variety of ways. So one way that we can describe slope is as a ratio in this case we would say 3 to 30 more often wanting to reduce that to 1 to 10 and the way we'd read that is one foot of rise for every 10 feet of run. Okay? Usually when we write it, well, always when we write it as a ratio, we want both units to be in feet, but we can reduce it so that the number on the left, the rise, is reduced to one. So that's one way of describing 
what's happening along this path. Every one, every, uh, for every 10 feet of run that you move, you rise, you change elevation by one foot. Okay? You can also write this as a simple fraction in which case you take the same numbers and you write them like a fraction. And so if you write it as a fraction, you'll say one foot of rise per 10 feet of run. Okay? Fractions, though, can also be used a little more liberally. So it's not uncommon to hear someone describe the slope of some area of land as, say, for example, one foot of rise per two miles of run, for example. So you'd say one foot of rise for two miles of run. This is not uncommon when people are describing, for example, slope of uh, areas in the western part of the country where it's really wide open areas and you're trying to understand like the movement of water and how fast streams will run, assuming that the steeper the land is, the faster the water will run. So it's kind of a specialized application, but anyway, it's one other way of describing slope. A much more common way of describing slope is as a percent. And this is pretty easy to understand too. In this case with percent, you're describing one foot of rise for every hundred units of run. But the way that you do it is essentially you just simply divide the rise by the run, which gives you a fraction, or a decimal rather. And then you multiply that by 100 to turn that into a percentage. In this case, you'd say this is a 10% slope, right? The 10% slope is the same slope as one foot per 10 feet of rise, one foot of rise per 10 feet of run, excuse me, or one foot of rise to 10 feet of run. So these are all expressing the same slope. Lastly, there is an expression of slope as a degree, deg as in degrees of slope, okay? In this case, when we talk about the, the, the slope degrees or the degrees of slope, what we're really talking about is this angle here. We want to know what the angle is. That's what the degrees describe. So the nice thing is that when we have the rise over run, that's essentially the tangent of that slope. If you can think back to trigonometry, the tangent, right, in this case, of that angle is the opposite side over the adjacent side. In this case, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent to that angle, right? So to get the angle, you take the inverse of the tangent, sometimes called the arc tangent, and you just flip the numbers. In this case, it would be 30 over 3, which comes out to approximately 6 degrees. So we could say that slope is a 6 degree slope, it's also a 10% slope. It's also one foot of rise to 10 feet of run. Right? So all of these are different kinds of expressions of slope. And again, it's always about describing the relationship between how much the elevation and changes for a change in horizontal distance. For the most part, though, we're going to stick with percent slope as a way of describing slope.